Hey everybody, so if you saw one of my other videos, uh, you'll know that one of my pet peeves is the braking system. Ensuring that your brake pins are in place, your snap ring is in place, all that other stuff. That's pre-trip stuff. Well, today I thought I would show you how to actually repair a brake line um, and, you know, get back on the road. A lot of times you may pick up a trailer uh, that's got a worn or even busted brake line and if you don't know how to repair that thing yourself you could be sitting there on the side of the road or at a yard somewhere and waiting on a service truck to come out and do a five or ten minute job uh, so I'm going to show you how to fix a common brake line it only takes two common wrenches and um, an end-to-end -end connector that's it and you're back on the road in 10 minutes and if you're one of those drivers that gets paid by the mile you know you only get paid for every mile that you go uh, you're not getting paid there to sit for possibly several hours waiting on the service guy to come out and fix your line so we're gonna go over how to do that and uh, maybe you guys will be able to fix your own airline if you ever need to. Let's take a look at this real quick. All right, so let me get my camera set up right here. Okay, right here we have your standard 3 8 inner diameter line. This is your brake line that goes, you know, from your truck to your trailer, uh, between your trailers at your dolly, whatever the case it is. This is your standard brake line. Uh, the hole inside that is three eighths of, a, of an inch diameter so that's inner diameter this would be the outer diameter and the hole here is three eighths so they call that three eighths ID or three eighths inner diameter okay very common that's the the airline that you most often see This is the part that you're going to use to repair a brake line. Uh, and then this is the tool that you'll use to do it. You'll need two of these. Doesn't matter how big they are, as long as they will fit that, that uh, nut right there. Okay, so... You come up on a trailer and you discover that the brake line is, or or maybe it's on your truck. Most often it's going to be on your truck because a lot of you guys are pulling those 52s. Well, now they're 53 foot long trailers, but um, you guys are pulling reefers, flatbeds, um, dry vans, whatever the case is. Uh, but if you're pulling doubles, you're going to see the same kind of brake line right here at your dolly. And in between the two trailers uh, this is the line you're going to be working on if you pull up on a uh, drop and hook job and you discover that the airlines on your um, your dolly are worn or even broken or maybe you've dropped a trailer and you pulled away from that sucker without disconnecting your air hoses that can happen too you're going to bust these airlines and uh, even if you don't bust them Here's a little warning for you. Even if you don't bust those airlines, you can stretch them out. If you pull too far away from that trailer, you'll stretch these airlines out and that's going to weaken them. So you're going to want to replace these airlines. So uh, let's just talk about the really quick fix right here. Uh, say, for instance, you've got a hole or a flat spot that's worn onto your brake line. Okay, all you're going to do is you're going to cut that line, okay, you cut it, and when you cut it, you want it to be uh, as flat as you can. You want a good clean cut at both ends here, okay, and then you're going to be carrying these here with you. This is part of your toolkit, and I'm going to do a video on um, things, that, things that we all should be carrying, not just the owner-operator guys. Um, but every driver out there should be carrying kit. 
um, tools, some simple common parts. Um, because, you know, most of you guys are getting paid by the mile out there. And so it's really important and really beneficial for you if you can work on some of this stuff yourself. Especially if it only takes five or ten minutes and it doesn't require you to get greasy or climb up underneath the truck or whatever. Um, parts like this, these brass end-to-end -end connectors and some extra airline, 3 8 ID airline inner diameter. That's going to save you a lot of time and uh, get you back on the road so that you can start making money by the mile. Okay, so let's take a look at this stuff. Here's your brass end-to-end -end connector. And what I mean by end-to-end -end connector is that when you have this thing all repaired, it's like that. It connects both of your ends because you've cut this airline to um, remove the hole or remove a weak spot in your airline. Um, so let's take a look at how to do it. All you're going to do is you're going to uh, get one of these out of the truck stop, the service bay, or out of your own toolkit, and you're going to separate these. Okay? They shouldn't be very tight. Now inside here, you've got a ferrule at both of these ends. This is your ferrule. And I'll try to get a good close-up of that. Okay? Now you'll notice that at, at this end here, it's kind of beveled or tapered down, whereas this end here is straight. That matters. It, it's important to note where your bevel is. Okay? So, now you grab your airline. You want to make that bevel go toward your repair end. Okay, the end that you just cut. All right. First, you're going to slip this onto your airline, and you'll know it if you do it wrong. <laughs> I've I've done it wrong a couple times when I was in a hurry or I was tired or frustrated or whatever. <laughs> I have put this sucker on there back uh, first, and it's like, well, that's not ever going to work. Okay, so you want to put this end onto your airline here. All right, and then take your ferrule. This is your ferrule. You're going to slip that onto the airline as well, and your bevel it, your beveled end of this ferrule is going to go toward your your cut end, your repair end. Slip that on there, and then you take this, your center part, and you're going to run that probe right inside your your hole there and mash that together okay you're shoving this part all the way into that airline as far as it'll go okay then from there you can just kind of start this thread by hand all right now you grab your other airline and you do the same thing here pay attention to your bevel this is the beveled end of my ferrule that's going to go toward the Repair end, same thing here, shove that all the way, shove it all the way in, okay, and thread these together. These are brass fittings, so you don't need any kind of plumbing tape, that white tape or anything, and you just kind of twist these together, twist them together by hand. Now this is going to get really tight and your airline here is going to start it's going to start you know rolling with your with your connection here. So you may have to take this end here, pop that glad hand off your trailer and allow it to spin freely as you tighten this up. Now here's the important part. What we're going to do is we're going to close all three of these portions together we're gonna we're gonna screw this end just as tight as we can to the center and we're gonna screw this end just as tight as we can to that center and what that's gonna do is that's gonna tighten this thing all the way up and that the beveled ends of your ferrule inside here are gonna clamp down onto this hose at both ends okay 
So all we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're just gonna start screwing this thing together just as tight as we can. All it takes is two standard crescent wrenches. Um, and, and, you know, in 10 minutes, we're done. We're no longer sitting at the yard waiting on the mechanic. We're no longer sitting at the side of the road waiting for the guy in the service truck to come out and get us back on the road. It's really, really helpful to know how to do this stuff because we get paid by the mile or some of you guys, lease operator guys, are getting paid by the load. So the more loads you can get done, the more money you're going to make out there, right? And that's what this is all about. It's about making money. Oh, I had that right the first time. What am I doing? Tighten that down a little bit. Man, I just messed that up. Did I? No, I didn't. Holy crap. It's freaking freezing cold out here in my garage as I'm trying to do this. So, notice what I'm doing. It doesn't take a lot of strength. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm putting all three of these parts together. I'm trying to get them as tight as possible and once they both close up to that center portion you're done you're done except for the little pre-trip inspection that you want to do on this part after you replace it or after you fix this airline you know of course with airlines we do want to uh, spray them with some soapy water and make sure that they're not leaking air uh, make sure we're not losing air out of this connection but it's not a really complicated thing and if we do this correctly in 10 minutes man we'll be back on the road trucking this is going to get really tight right here as you get closer to the finish point. Oh, I just backed off a little bit. You're gonna know when, when it's tight that your job is done as long as it's not blowing bubbles when you hit it with the soap, soapy water. Tighten up my wrench a little bit. I don't like crescent wrenches, but uh, they are my preferred tool for this job. That sucker is just as tight as I can get it, I think. I might give it another twist. Try to. <clears throat> All right, there you go. Set those back down into your toolbox. Now look, here's something. Okay, so now you can see all three of these um, wrench points are connected. They're squished together. That connection, this end-to-end -end connection, is just as tight as it needs to be. And notice it doesn't have to be, this flat parts, they don't have to be lined up, you know, all smooth and stuff. You're not, you're not building a watch here. Um, but that's it. That's your end-to-end -end connections. These are available, um, these brass connections and the, the 3 8 airline. Um, 
they're available at pretty much any truck stop. Um, service trucks are going to have them, but uh, you should be able to get them at at your own mechanic yard, your own truck yard, wherever that is. You go into your yard and uh, you tell your mechanic, hey, I want some um, end-to-end -end brass connections for brake line, and I want about, you know, six, eight feet of uh, air hose. That way you can fix this stuff on your own and get off that fog line, get out of that parking lot, get rolling. It's just that simple. Um, you're going to have other air hose running uh, under your truck, you know, stuff that goes to your seat and your little house cleaning hose or whatever, and those aren't going to be 3 8 diameter, um, but they're not going to be as important as this 3 8 of an inch inner diameter airline. This is the airline you want to carry, if nothing else. This is the connection you want to carry, if nothing else. Um, and if you don't enjoy sitting at a yard or sitting on the side of the road waiting for a mechanic to come out and do this, then grab yourself a couple wrenches, grab yourself, you know, four or five of these connections and maybe 10 feet of airline and you can repair this stuff on your own and uh, get back on the road. And that's what it's all about. After that, your airline's fixed. You throw your glad hand, your glad hand would be on this end, throw that sucker back on the trailer, and uh, put some air in it, hit this thing, you're going to want to uh, inspect this part now, and the only way you do it is spray it with uh, some soapy water, um, and make sure it's not leaking. That's it, and you're back on the road, man. 10 minutes you're back on the road and that's a heck of a lot better than uh, hours out of the road waiting for somebody to come help you out two wrenches 10 feet of airline a couple connections or a connection whatever you should be carrying all that stuff with you uh, I'll do another video on some of the kit that you should be carrying even as a company driver uh, and uh, you can check that out when it drops I don't know when I'll shoot that video but this is how you fix an airline your most common airline your red line and your blue line hope that helps hope to see you guys out on the road and uh, be safe guys okay so here's a bonus clip for you that I just thought about uh, for you guys that are pulling doubles and triples um, and you come up on a drop and hook job and you notice that the airlines on your dolly are resting on your dolly uh, some of these dollies have long airlines to them you know maybe too long but uh, if that airline is resting on the frame of your dolly or if the two airlines are rubbing against each other as you're going down the road you know uh, everything on that truck is vibrating and what you'll see is that these airlines will start developing a flat spot they're wearing out right there and that's going to be a weak spot it'll turn into a hole it'll turn into a leak and if the commercial cop sees that during a an inspection he's going to tell you about it and he's going to say hey look you need to fix your airline because it's got a flat spot a flat spot is a weak spot and the cops don't like that and frankly safe drivers we don't like that either we don't want our, our airlines to be weak or stressed in any way stretched out or any of that um, especially that red hose that you you your uh, your hose with the red glad hand on it because every single time uh, we're rolling down the road that red glad hand airline has a lot of pressure in it it's got a lot of air in it that's the line that that uh, keeps that spring brake push back and allows you to roll that trailer so let's say for instance you pull up on a dolly or you notice that the airline that 
rests across your catwalk going from your truck to the first trailer. Maybe that's got a flat spot in it. Um, you're going to want to, first of all, replace that, that hose with an end-to-end -end connection like we just went over a few minutes ago. Um, but say, for instance, you notice that the airline on your dolly is resting on that dolly or it's rubbing up against the other airline. Maybe it doesn't have a flat spot on it yet. Maybe it's just fine. But if we know that it's resting on that dolly, if we know that the two airlines are rubbing together, you know, they're crossing or they're, you know, they're running sideways like this here with each other, we're going to want to protect that airline. If it's not already developed a flat spot, um, we don't really need to repair that line with an end-to-end -end connection here, but we do want to wrap that airline, and we can do that really simply with another piece of airline. Let me show you how to do that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to take another piece of airline. It can be old and worn out and ugly and stupid. It could be um, just some trash piece of airline. Um, but what we're going to do is sharpen our knife, for crying out loud. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to take another piece of air hose like this, and you're going to split that lengthwise. If I can do this without chopping off a finger, I'll be a lot happier. So, split that airline. This is not the preferred knife that I like to do this with, but let's see. I like to use my cordage knife for this. And all you're going to do is you're just going to run this knife. And you're just going to split that airline, that piece of trash airline, right down the middle lengthways so that it opens up just like that okay and look at what I've done there I've split that all the way through it, it doesn't matter because this line this piece of, of protective air line isn't going to hold any air obviously you just split the hell out of it okay so put your tools away into your belt because that's where your knife should go okay so now what we've got is we've got this protective basically a protective layer and we're going to use two zip ties if you're a truck driver and you're not madly in love with the zip ties then I don't think we can be friends anymore so let's say for instance this is our uh, this is the part of the air hose that's resting on the dolly frame or it's um, you know vibrating against another airline or something like that so here's your here's your spot uh, this is the well that didn't show up very well did it okay so let's say this is your flat spot right here okay or not a flat spot. If it's a flat spot right there, it's already started to wear out and you're going to want to put an end-to-end -end connection on it right there at this flat spot. But if, if it's not a flat spot yet, but it is a potential trouble point uh, in your airline, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about protecting this portion of the hose from becoming worn out. So what we're going to do and you can get a slightly larger diameter airline for this if you want. But uh, because 3 8 ID, wrapping around 3 8 ID can be a little bit of a pain. Especially in cold weather when your fingers are frozen and you're trying to do this with gloves or whatever. So... We're going to wrap that split hose right around that trouble spot. And you're, 
good to go. Now you just take your zip line your zip tie right there you're going to tighten her down and put a couple zip ties on this thing they're cheap they're cheap and your company will pay for them <laughs> use that company credit card there and what I like to do is take my tool and I'll give that sucker a little tug and get her cinched down there and you could throw another zip tie in the middle here or whatever I mean you can you can really get that thing cinched down but uh, let me throw these in the trash and that's it and now what you've got is you've got a protective layer now this portion here this this hose that you just put on is going to rest on the frame of your dolly or it's going to uh rest on the other air hose and if it's two air hoses that are like crisscrossing like this and they're resting against against each other when you're trucking down the road and you know everything on that thing is vibrating you're going to want to wrap that both hoses if they're connecting here you know uh and rubbing against each other wrap both of these hoses like that like this here um but if it's just one hose on your frame that's going to be wearing out obviously you only have to wrap that hose but that's it one simple uh short piece of trash airline um a couple two or three zip ties and you're good to go and uh, I've pulled in to scale houses um, for inspections and had the cop notice this on my dolly because I always I'm always pulling doubles he'll notice that I've wrapped this arrow air hose with another air hose and he'll ask me about it and I'll tell him yeah you can see that that air hose is resting and vibrating on that dolly frame so I protected it and I've had a couple cops ask me to remove this split hose so that he can see that this hose is not worn out. It doesn't have a hole in it. It doesn't have a flat spot. And incidentally, if this hose has a, if your actual air hose has a hole in it, this isn't going to plug that hole. It's not going to keep your airline from leaking. All this does is protect your actual airline, your good line from developing a flat spot, weak spot, hole, whatever. That's all it's doing. It's just a buffer. Um, it's not a repair. This is your repair. This is your protection against having to make a repair. Okay? So, if the cop asks you to pull this off so that he can see underneath this to ensure that you don't have a flat spot, um, then, okay, you cut this sucker off you, know, you, you you clip your zip lines, you remove it, you show it to him. He'll see that all you've done is put a buffer between your airline and the frame of your dolly or whatever. And uh, he'll tell you, okay, good to go. And then you put the, you grab another couple zip ties, you zip that thing back on there, and there you go. You're good to go. This is not illegal to do this. It's absolutely not illegal to do this. It's a good idea to do it. And a cop that sees that you've done this is going to see that you're paying attention to your equipment and you're taking preventative measures against you know blowing an airline out um and uh you know whether he appreciates that or not you may well appreciate it so that's how you protect your airline against uh premature wear due to vibration against other objects and uh there you go you doubles and triples guys Start paying attention to your dolly hoses. Make sure they're not rubbing on something. Um, get up underneath your equipment. Make sure all your air hoses are separated from everything. You don't want them rubbing against another airline. You don't want them rubbing against electrical lines. You don't want them rubbing against the frame. 
or air tanks or anything. You want them to be free of that vibration and wear. Um, and you don't have to reroute them. You're not, you know, running different plumbing routes here. All you do is you just wrap that sucker with a piece of trash, airline, zip tie it on, and you're good to go. Hope that helps. Start checking your equipment. It's important.